Hey y'all, welcome to episode eight of Create This Book by Mariah Elizabeth and Ashley Monet. That would be me. As always, all of my Create This Book videos are arranged in a neat little playlist that I'm gonna link in the description. We have four new prompts to tackle this week. So enough of me talking. Let's jump right in and see what I can create. For our first prompt this week, create an ink blot. Drop ink, paint, or any other colored fluid onto this page. Make observations about it. I decided to try something a little different today. I've been watching some other artists and have found myself inspired to do some ballpoint pen drawing. I don't ever do that, but some people can make it look really nice, so why not give it a try? Knowing I was going to make an ink blot on this page, I thought of the ink blot test that they give at the therapist's office. You know, you look at the ink blot, tell the therapist what it looks like to you, and that somehow reveals something about the inner workings of your brain. Do they even actually do those tests anymore, or is it just like a Hollywood movie trope? Either way, I decided I should draw a therapist peeking out from behind the ink blot that I will eventually create. I gave him a few features that, for whatever reason, screamed therapist in my brain, such as glasses, a simple polished quaff of hair, a cozy turtleneck sweater, and the clipboard in his lap. I'm still jazzed over this concept, but I can't lie, I'm not happy at all with how he came out. I think I handicapped myself a little too much on this one. First, using a medium I've had like zero practice with. Second, choosing to draw a man when I am much more comfortable drawing women. Third, drawing without a reference because I couldn't find a reference in this exact pose. And fourth, drawing with such a limited amount of space. I wanted the majority of the page to be the ink blot, but I still had to draw his whole body so it was clear he was a therapist and not just some dude in the background. Let's just say this long line of poor decision making left me with this guy. He looks extra gooberish, proportions are off, and he's poorly shaded. Me no likey. But that's okay, let's press on with the ink blot. That's the focus after all. I squeezed a little black acrylic out onto the page, doing my best to keep my pattern totally random. Close the book and then opened it back up to see the blot. It looked a little too sparse for me, so I added a little more paint, closed it again, opened it again. Now it's time to make our observations. What do you see? To finish off the drawing, I added a border around the ink blot so it appears to be printed on a card, then added a hand holding it, who could that be? Now the therapist is saying, tell me what you see. I'll tell you what I see. My first thought was the tar lungs of a smoker. But I also kind of thought it looked like two puppies begging on their hind legs. And the last thing I saw were those little baby footprints done in ink right after the baby's born. I will say now in the edit, I see something else too, and this is going to be a weird one, but hear me out. Pandas in seductive poses. <laughs> I got that picture on Google, but I can't help but wonder what kind of website it came from. Oh, well, that's it on this one. Again, super happy with the idea, but not with the finished page. I'm sure I'm being hard on myself. On the flip side, I do think that trying to see something in the blot was actually really fun, so I did like that about this prompt. On to the next. Create a page for stickers. Place stickers all over this page. Am I the only weirdo who doesn't collect stickers? <laughs> Anyways, I had to make a special trip to buy stickers for this prompt, and I was drawn to, surprise, surprise, mermaids. So I want to make this page kind of an under the sea look to complement them. Using acrylic, I gave the page a subtle gradient, starting with the main shade of teal in the middle, then darker the deeper the water goes, then lighter toward the water surface. The blending took a lot of back and forth, but I think it looks nice overall. I did not plan ahead for what I should do with this prompt. I didn't think the starburst blast shape worked at all. So in the moment, I was just like, oh, I'll just do a circle. But that wasn't looking right. So then I thought, ooh, a mermaid tail silhouette. That was on theme for sure. I went in with some white to create some waves on the surface, as well as some sun rays shining down into the water. Then I wanted to make some rock formations on the side, almost like we're peering through a trench or a cove. Of course, we need some plant life down here. A little seaweed and some coral. 
I outlined that tail and realized that with that subtext beneath the prompt, the tail was looking a little out of proportion, um, a little too thick. I scrapped that bottom line. The prompt is pretty straightforward without it. Nobody's getting confused on this one. And now that tail looks much better. <laughs> Added a few bubbles and then it was sticker time. I didn't go nuts with the stickers. I really didn't want to fully cover the background that I had just slaved over, but I like it so much this way. I will forever love mermaids and that is the vibe. But note to self, I will work on accruing a sticker collection because <laughs> I guess you never know when you're going to need them. <laughs> I was super excited for this next prompt. Create directions. Add your own directions for this page. Write your prompt in the box below. I will be fully covering the existing page, so I need to rewrite the prompt on the page I'm working on. I'm hiding my sketch because I don't want to spoil it yet. Yana 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 directions, blah 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 blah, write your prompt here. My prompt is Disney villain cupcakes. I've seen Disney princess cupcakes done before and I love that, but of course I'm much more drawn to the villains. So I wanted to design a little cupcake for each of my favorites. Starting with my background colors, you might be able to guess some of these just from the silhouettes. I laid the rainbow of background colors down, and some people are triggered by the fact that I start my rainbow with green. I don't know why, but I hate the transition from yellow to green. It always looks like a hiccup in the rainbow to me. So the way I set it up, all of the colors are still there. They're still technically in order, just arranged in what I think is a more aesthetic way. Time for some liner. For the green, the horns might have been a dead giveaway, but I'm designing this cupcake off of Maleficent from Sleeping Beauty. For the blue, I had to go with Hades from Hercules. There are lots of purple villains, but I had to shift them to other colors because my purple is for sure Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove. For pink, I chose to go with Madame Mim from The Sword in the Stone. Orange will be Scar from The Lion King. And last, but certainly not least, yellow for Cruella de Vil. Cruella de Vil. Before I get into coloring, let me beef up this header right quick. For Maleficent's cupcake, let's start with some green frosting. Then I've got the little orb she has on top of her staff as like the cherry on top. I just love Maleficent. She gives evil yet regal energy. Definitely the HBIC. I want these cupcake sleeves to be black, of course. Okay, let's talk Hades. He's definitely my favorite male villain. So much sass, so much wit, just a great sense of humor. Obvious call to make the frosting look like his flame hair and added his little skull pin as a decoration. Now on to Yzma. I just love her. She very well could be my favorite. I can 100 see myself growing to be old and crotchety, yet somehow fabulous like her. I gave her cupcake a little feather trim and of course her massive headpiece with those pearl sprinkles to match the vibe of those massive earrings she wears. Now when it comes to Madame Mim, I love a crazy chick. One of the coolest things to me about her is how she has the power to make herself conventionally gorgeous, and yet she chooses to be herself. Like, hats off to her. I wanted to model her cupcake to represent her in her dragon form, but pink instead of purple. Like I said, I had to switch some colors up to make way for Yzma. Now for Scar. Oh, that Scar. He is so great. Just everything he says is dripping with vicious sarcasm. I love it. And with his scar, you know there's a whole backstory there left unexplored. I made his cupcake to generally mirror his silhouette with a big gash and chocolate drizzle just dripping down. Now Cruella, oh my Cruella. Original Cruella was a little bit one-dimensional, but I love where the Glenn Close version took her. Total Glamazon psychopath. I've got a layer that represents her signature yellow fur, then a swirl layer for her split hair color, and then had to do a little Dalmatian dollop and top it off with a cherry because she's a lover of red too. So I had to slip a little in for her. As an added touch, I wanted to fill some of this empty space with the names of them all. I tweaked each of the fonts to be kind of representative of the villain and their character. Now for the finishing touch, it's juicy highlight time. <laughs> Glue it into the book, and that's that. 
Ugh, I just love this little ode to all my favorite bad guys and girls. The villain, to me, pretty much makes the story, and in my opinion, these ones are just the best. I can't even say how happy this page makes me. Now for the fourth and final prompt, create a secret secret. Write a secret here. Cover it up somehow. My secret's gonna be a juicy one. Let me cover up my sketch for a sec to protect it from the splatter. Ah, yes, splatter everywhere. This was so therapeutic. I need to splatter more often. <laughs> So this works with my overall theme for this spread, which is going to be crime. Let me paint that other page my signature black. Now to color in my little drawing here. It is definitely giving a pretty little liars. Not a secret, can you keep it? Taking this one to the grave. Hey, it works for the theme. If you're thinking about my secret, don't worry. It's not that I've committed any sort of crime. <laughs> I'm laying down my base colors with the good old alcohol markers. These book pages definitely don't love the alcohol inks much. The texture is kind of splotchy, but you know what? I can work with it. Let's go in with colored pencils to punch it up a little and even it out. Ugh, loving this. Now for my secret. I've created this mini manila folder to conceal my secret. It'll be like a little case file. Let me color it appropriately. And now to add the secret inside. So much build up, but I have teased before that I have a plan one day in the future to start up a series on my channel that is my own original idea, very on brand for me. I'm nowhere near there yet, but I can share this little secret here for absolutely no one to see. <laughs> so let me stamp this file, top secret. Eh, a little splatter to match the other side. Ah uh, yeah, secret time. If you manage to decipher it through this filter, you know what? You deserve to know what the secret is. <laughs> Glue it in the book. And here it is all finished. I love this spread so much. Totally my vibe. I hope to be able to share this secret with you guys sooner rather than later because it's kind of burning a hole in my pocket. And sadly with that, we have come to the end of our time together this week. Let's take a look back. We created an ink blot, putting this tar lung puppy panda baby foot ink block in front of the patient with an inquisitive, poorly drawn therapist in the background. <laughs> we created a page for stickers. I painted a cute little ocean scene and decorated the page with an array of mermaid themed stickers. This page captures my under the sea dreams. We created directions where I got to create my very own prompt. That was super cool, and I chose to create a half a dozen cupcakes inspired by Disney villains. The best of the best. Ugh, I love it. And lastly, we created a secret secret. In this crime-themed spread, I hid my secret in a top secret file folder. The secret might never see the light of day. Whoops, you didn't see that. This one is my favorite of the week. I had a ton of fun making it, and I love how it looks. Thank you guys so much for watching. I do have a bonus video coming this week. So until next time, uh, goodbye.